Hi everyone, this lesson is on some new research showing an increased risk of skin cancer in individuals who have atopic dermatitis or eczema. So we'll first talk about eczema or atopic dermatitis. We'll also talk about some of the pathophysiology as to why it occurs because this will help us understand why eczema can increase the risk of certain types of skin cancer, which we'll discuss a bit later. So atopic dermatitis or eczema is a chronic autoimmune pruritic inflammatory skin condition. So it's chronic, so it is often going to be flares of skin lesions that look like this. It's an autoimmune condition, and it is pruritic, meaning that it's itchy. It's actually going to be the most common chronic inflammatory skin condition, and we're often going to see onset in early childhood. So there are different ages of onset of eczema and there's early onset which is the most common type and that's going to occur in early childhood but we can see it occurring in adulthood so it can be an adult onset eczema or we can also see it even in older individuals above the age of 60. Now we're often going to see eczema occurring in certain parts of the body including the head and neck, the arms and the legs and it is going to generally spare the axilla or the armpits and the groin area. It's a chronic condition, meaning that we're going to get these types of skin lesions that come and go. Certain things can cause them to be triggered or flare up. Anything like the weather, so extremes in weather conditions. Not getting enough sun exposure can lead to more skin lesions. So we can often see this in higher latitude countries. Patients in those countries can often have more of these skin lesions. And even certain foods may trigger some of these lesions. We're often going to see them in the creases or the flexural areas as well. So we can often see them in places where you bend. So that's a place where they can often occur as well. And then we can get xerosis or drying of the skin and also lichenification, which means there's a thickening of the skin. So all these can be findings of atopic dermatitis. We're going to briefly discuss the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis or eczema because it's going to help us better understand why we may actually see an increased risk of skin cancer in atopic dermatitis patients. So the first part of the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis involves a defective epidermal barrier. So the skin has a barrier and it is defective in some way. The reason is likely multifactored, but we can see a filaggrin mutation. So filaggrin is a protein that helps make up the epidermal barrier, especially in the stratum corneum of the skin, that top layer of the skin. We can also see an imbalance of protease and antiprotease activity. So we see protease and antiproteases like calicrean and lecti. And then there may be some tight junction abnormalities. So tight junctions are the seal between cells. So if there's issues between the seal, so if there's two cells touching each other, if there's an issue with the way they touch each other, if there's an issue with tight junctions, that can also lead to an epidermal barrier issue. And not only that, we can see issues with immune dysregulation as well. So we do know that with atopic dermatitis, it is part of a triad of conditions like asthma and allergic rhinitis that all have increased immunoglobulin E. This is a certain type of antibody. This certain type of antibody, IgE, is elevated. With regards to one part of our immune system, the innate immune system, we can see issues with reduced TLR2 and TLR9 functioning. These toll-like receptors are lower than they should be. With regards to TLR2, this is important with regards to infections with Staphylococcus aureus, a certain type of bacteria. So if we have reduced functioning of this particular receptor, we can have more infections with Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, and this can often be one possibility as to why there may be a flare-up, a Staphylococcus aureus infection. And then with regards to another part of our immune system, the adaptive immune system, we can see increased expression of certain types of immune cells, certain types of T cells, like T helper cells, so T helper 1 or TH1, TH2 cells, and TH17. With regards to early flare-ups, of eczema, we can have higher Th2 cells, and then in more chronic cases, we can see higher Th1. Now, there is a question as to which one comes first. Perhaps there's immune dysregulation that comes first, and then this leads to issues with a defective epidermal barrier, or it leads to a worsening of some of the issues that are already a problem with the epidermal barrier, or is it problems with the epidermal barrier that's leading to an immune dysregulation? So one or the other may be occurring, or they're both occurring together. Now that leads us into the Medscape article entitled, Atopic Dermatitis Linked to Higher Odds of Non-Melanoma Skin Cancer. We'll discuss non-melanoma skin cancer and what that means later on. 
So it has been noted in at least a few studies over the past several years that patients with atopic dermatitis are at a higher risk of non-melanoma skin cancer. So what was found was that compared to patients without atopic dermatitis, patients with atopic dermatitis had a 1.53 odds ratio for non-melanoma skin cancer, meaning that generally their odds of getting non-melanoma skin cancer is 53% higher than patients without atopic dermatitis. So that came from a 2021 study. And then in a 2024 study, we also find higher rates of non-melanoma skin cancer in patients with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis compared to patients without atopic dermatitis. So what are some of those non-melanoma skin cancers? So some of these include basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is actually the most common type of skin cancer. It's a skin cancer that generally occurs above the upper lip, and it's going to be pink, pearly, and a papule or a nodule. So we're going to see a skin lesion that looks like this. It can have telangiectasias tasias as well, like, like these little arteries that show. And then the other non-melanoma skin cancer is squamous cell carcinoma. We can generally see a lesion like this, or we may see some wound that doesn't seem to heal. Squamous cell carcinoma is more likely to occur below the lower lip, but it can occur anywhere where there's sun exposure, as can basal cell carcinoma as well. And the reason for why we may see an increased risk of non-melanoma skin cancers in atopic dermatitis patients is because of those pathophysiological mechanisms we talked about before, defective epidermal barrier and that immune dysregulation. So because of that recurring inflammation that occurs in eczema or atopic dermatitis, we can see an increased risk of skin damage from that recurring inflammation. And either because of that disrupted epidermal barrier or because of the increased inflammatory response, all of that can lead to increased risk of these types of skin cancer, or it may be due to some of the treatments that are used. So some of the treatments used for eczema may be leading to an increased risk of these types of skin cancers. Either way, we are seeing more and more evidence of an increased risk of non-melanoma skin cancers in patients with atopic dermatitis or eczema. Hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please check out my full lesson on atopic dermatitis for more information. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.